it really comes down to the detailing. It's really about the building envelope that really determines how successful the structure will be, regardless of if it's wood, steel, or concrete. It isn't really so much about how does one product beat out another one. It's more around what makes sense for the space and what they're trying to do. There's kind of a misperception of deforestation that they hear. Six stories of wood for 63,000 square feet. It looks like a lot of wood when you look at it, but our forests in US and Canada will regrow that in five minutes. The scale of our forests uh, this building is a blip. Thanks for having me. I'm Bill Parsons with Woodworks, Vice President of Operations. Woodworks Wood Products Council is a nonprofit in the wood industry focused on helping architects and engineers, contractors and developers build with wood. Woodworks is actually a virtual organization. We were, we've were we been doing that since the beginning. We've officially headquarters in Washington, D.C. have a field staff that, that is out in market that covers each metro area. Our entire team is really uh, staffed with architects and en engineers, design professionals to help design professionals. I'm a professional engineer registered in California. So Woodworks role related to the wood industry is to provide that a technical support element and we are funded by the software lumber board it's a checkoff program that is that's part of usda and the way that the government is really set up to market commodity products just like the got milk campaign we are the part of the lumber campaign but the american wood council handles the code side they kind of create the landscape of building codes and work with icc what the rules are around wood how do we maintain life safety requirements that are in the building codes think wood is the uh, kind of broad marketing arm that, that gets people interested, gives examples around what wood can do. We bring back concerns from designers and help interface back with the code system. And really we help in all different levels from basically, can I build this building out of wood down to, I got stuck at the job site with a, a code official wants a certain piece of information. Multifamily is really our uh, bread and butter projects that we work on, helping people go beyond just what they believe is the code limit of wood and helping them expand into that. Softwood lumber is really the structural lumber that gets used in the US. So it's the main the main player of wood that's used in buildings, it's pine, dug fir, hem fir, uh, southern pine in the south. Each wood basket around a mill has specific softwoods that are grown, but mostly in the west and in the southeast. But as you transition north, there's more hardwoods, mixed forests. Wood traditionally is used in residential construction really because of the optimized system that it is. A two by four and a two by six are one of the most optimized way to, to build a structure because we've been doing it for so long. This, this first one is actually what most people think about around wood construction is, is type five construction which is capped out at four stories. But the last few code cycles, going back probably the last 15 years, type three construction has really started to go in where you can have five stories of, of uh, residential uh, wood overall. There's rules in the building code related to sprinkler systems, what the areas can be. The type three construction looks kind of like this when it's just basically on built that grade uh, construction. But then as we go to this, you can also add mezzanines into it. So you have this additional kind of higher level area. It doesn't count as a floor in residential. Um, and so you can get up to actually a five-story residential building with a mezzanine on top of a podium, you know, which can be quite, quite a large. This is almost a seven-story building. If you count the stories just as a layman, but by code, it's actually a five-story building. By adding, you know, simple fire, uh, three-hour fire separation, um, you create those two buildings. And then over time, we've really seen that to evolve into what the what can be above and below, what can happen, how many heights can the can the podium go. Where now in 2015 code it was moved to be basically no restriction related to the number of stories. You still have a maximum height. A good example of that is actually in Sacramento, 1430Q project, a six-story wood plus mezzanine over a two-story podium. So it's a six over two. This is really one of the first of its kind in the U.S. It creates, you know, a very economical building, ways to kind of navigate the code to allow this, allow this to happen. Woodworks has a case study related on this uh, on this entire project, but it's a great example of kind of taking what, as the code has evolved, taking those code uh, limits and understanding what can be done with them to create a, uh, a larger, more dense, dense structure for housing. How are the building code officials like the ICC getting more comfortable with higher rise wood construction? Codes are there really for life safety of the occupants. So there's re requirements that kind of get layered on that we're not going through that are part of that discussion to make sure that, that it is a safe way to build. Depends on 
the what the firefighters have, what what happens related to um, what their equipment evolving over time. So that that stuff is part of this evolution. I think if you go back fifty years to what the rules were versus what's now. It's kind of the new technology around around fire and fire safety that is allowing light frame tall buildings to continue to evolve. The mass timber side of things, that product um, ha- having inherent fire resistance is that's what really allows us to go taller than this than the structure here is because you have built in fire resistance you don't have to cover up the wood to protect it where these the wood is not exposed in, in the structures you've got protected with drywall there's floor wall assemblies are built and tested to uh that are required for these types of structures the exposed wood side of things just adds a whole another level of new technology to it but this evolution on the podium side i think is really just more around just the understanding of what what it can do. You know, building materials and construction make up 11% of our emissions, and and how do we really kind of affect that? And that's really where where wood does play a key role into it, related to thinking about all of the sustainable benefits. Carbon is becoming even more more of an important part of that story. A tree is growing, and through photosynthesis, is re- it's it's holding carbon, and half of a tree's weight is carbon. You're really storing that carbon for long-term storage, and wood buildings as a carbon sinks. Uh, there's kind of the misperception of deforestation that you, that you hear because you're thinking of uh, rainforest forests, re- realistically, that are thinking like these other places, there's there's forests. If we look at where the structural wood comes from, again, offwoods that are used in the U.S., are in North America. And the North American forests actually growing volume in flat area. So the forests have been continuing to grow and not being harvested actually. There's more volume uh, today than there was in 1950 on, on the timberlands. Most of the land, forest land in the US actually is uh, privately owned, which they have an incentive to uh, keep it going that they will cut something down, but they'll replant in order to be able to harvest their product again. It's, it's similar to harvesting corn, it's just on a much longer uh, cycle. We're, we've really always harnessed the forest here to build build housing. Six stories of wood for 63,000 square feet, not even a giant building by any stretch, but we're it looks like a lot of wood when you're looking at it, but our forests uh, in US and Canada will regrow that in five minutes, right? So we've got at the, at the scale of our forests, uh, this building is a blip. That's crazy. So the U.S. forests are growing like a six-story, 100-unit apartment building every five minutes. <laughs> yeah, thinking about it that way from a sustainability perspective. Other benefits related to wood, especially some of these mass timber projects and exposed wood, the biophilic side of things, make you feel connected to nature and having that um, natural material you can have a uh, profound impact on, on how the occupants feel. Large prefabricated panels that come in are being installed with with smaller crews. The, the ability to build buildings with a lot less labor, you know, four to six people on a mass timber job compared to on a poor day at a, at a concrete job could be up to 30 people. Cost side of things is that the light frame system, right, has been optimized for hundreds of years. And through that, that optimization is really the most cost-effective way to build a building of the six-story range. You can you can get to a very cost-effective structure because of these construction cycle savings and using the structure as the finished materials, see some additional savings in these areas where wood traditionally hasn't been able to, to play. What do you hear as the main criticisms of wood construction? Well, I think as everyone thinks about wood, you're like, oh my gosh, it's going to burn, right? I think that's the first yeah. thing that everyone thinks about. Well, there's specific assemblies that have been tested and, and have that structure as a way to maintain it and, and protect it in the fire from a life safety perspective and sprinklers and you know there's layers of protection that have been built into it and similar to that is the exposed wood related to mass timber can uh, has similar built-in fire performance so the char char of the wood itself is protecting it um, just like you would have to spray on intermittent coating on a steel beam to protect it wood's got that built into it basically so you can design that in the uh, the structure and you know we have to have lots of testing and examples of of it being successful in fire. How long is this thing gonna last is a big question. Well, we've got, uh, you know, same thing. We've got pictures of uh, the pagodas in in Japan that have lasted thousands of years and have been around. So it really comes down to the detailing. It's very similar to why why does a uh, any material building get torn down in 10 years and why, you know, there are lawsuits about water coming into apartments and, and condos because it's really about the building envelope that really determines how successful the structure will be, regardless of if it's wood, steel, or concrete. Wood seems to also have, I guess, negative 
wrap on printability. Most uh, architects kind of recognize that wood is really good from an overall, like it doesn't conduct heat like a steel stud does. Assemblies for wood um, for just normal building envelope are, are different than steel because of that, uh, that element of their difference of how much they conduct heat. Uh, I, I mean, it depends. I think it comes down to the building the envelope design more than anything. You can get to a particular, you know, R rating, use it for passive house. We've got lots of multifamily passive house examples that have, uh, specifically in the Northeast, there's quite a big movement related to uh, multifamily passive house. Um, so it, it's totally can be done and it's, it plays really well. And um, the conductivity of the wood it certainly plays into it in that you really can, you can make a really great building envelope with wood involved. Residential housing, single family housing that we have in the U.S. is, is made of wood, which isn't necessarily the same way around the world. The, the uh, prevalence of residential in the, I guess, kind of historic context in the, in the U.S. of using wood for residential isn't necessarily there in like kind of the middle of Europe. It's mostly around using uh, brick, uh, stone, you know, they're very historic. Their, their time scale is so much different than ours. So with that, uh, it is kind of a different perception around, around housing. So with that, we have quite a head start, I would say, related to understanding um, how we can build multifamily out of wood because we're used to living in wood in single family houses. Many places, their codes are more performance-based than the US and the ICC uh, codes are, are very prescriptive. And so the main difference there is that you, as a design professional in Europe, you can kind of say, okay, this is what the rules are that I need to meet. And I can kind of describe how I want those, how I'm gonna meet those. On the US, we more or less kind of do it more like a cookbook. We say, I'm gonna build a type uh, 3A building. And that type 3A building is gonna have X, Y, and Z components that have to be met to go into it. So it's more of a kind of, I'm gonna pick the structure and the types of fire requirements based on what that fire type is, uh, building occupancy is. And so then those are the ingredients that have to go in. So we have kind of a little bit of difference on this, which changes a little bit of how we look at going taller with wood is because we basically now in the 2021 code have put in the rules related to uh, related to tall wood uh, at a, from a prescriptive basis where around the world they've been going at it the same way they normally do their codes related to performance space. So, hey, if I can justify it, I'm going to try to do it. Um, here in the U.S., that's a lot more work. Uh, it's going to be adopted more uh, by developers and architects if there's more set up firm rules, which are now available in the 2021 code. I guess talking about the future of wood construction, so mass timber examples or prefab or... And mass timber is really just a kind of a, another style of panelized construction where you're cutting in all the holes, you're pre-planning everything. You've got a digital twin that of that building before it's built that works out all the clashes and all the, the potential problems. So when you get to the job site, you're just installing the pieces and parts. And mass timber in general is, you know, made up of, of technology that has kind of been around for a while. Like the glue lamb timber is, is like a hundred years old. It's been around and used in, in buildings going back, back decades. Cross laminated timber, CLT, has been used um, in Europe for about 20 years. So we're kind of taking these, this idea of gluing together large pieces of wood and then like taking a two by four, two by six and two by eight and gluing it together and making a, making a panel out of it. Um, there's other technologies, down laminated timber, and laminated timber, and laminated timber, that are also kind of uh, options in the mix. And we've seen this really meteoric rise of, the, of, of mass timber buildings over the last uh, just a few years, really since this is, goes back to 2013. Now we have about a, over 1,100 buildings um, that are active, either under construction or in design of mass timber, pretty well everywhere in the U.S. We've launched a Woodworks Innovation Network, which goes through how you, um, the design teams and how you find somebody that's experienced with mass timber. See some examples, you know, and what kind of, what's what's been happening. Uh, Brock Commons was really kind of the, one of the first upper North American uh, tall wood projects. Munja Starnet in, in Norway. Um, it's kind of a mix of uh, hotel and apartments and office. The Hoho building on Austria is uh, also built around housing. There's actually five projects in the U.S that are now kind of tall wood, the carbon 12 building. Portland, it's an eight-story, 85-foot 
tall uh, condo building. And this was kind of the first start of it. And from this, it's kind of set the, the provisions that now became part of the 2021 building code. So it's kind of started, um, at least was the first built example. The intro project in Cleveland, an eight story timber over podium, but apartment building and mixed use. Ascent is going to be the largest uh, wood building in the world, in Milwaukee, like 25 stories. So it's a 19 uh, floors of timber over a six story podium. So, you know, exposing that, that biophilic aspect of timber. And I think it depends on where you are in the building and how big they are. But, uh, you know, the fire performance is built in. So you have to oversize them a little bit to, uh, to make that work. Kind of some common space and restaurant will look like. And then ADM in, in Washington, D.C. is actually an overbuild project. It's a uh, three-story overbuild uh, over top an existing seven-story building. It kind of sets up for this interesting idea that timber is so light and its strength to weight ratio is very, very good. And so you can build extra stories on top of buildings. Every concrete steel building is really a podium. Kind of what it was, they were trying to, the developer was trying to figure out what do I need to do with this building? And they can only build like one other story of an alternative material, but they could get three with, with wood. And, uh, and DC has special requirements about how tall you can be overall. So you can really only be in this little area and so um, with timber, they were able to do that and not really modify much of the structure below. Depending on where you're at pricing it, that wood and steel and concrete are going to come in very similar to each other. Um, sometimes the upfront material cost for mass timber will be a little bit higher, but you're going to make that up on this uh, prefab side of construction cycle savings. So you're going to be done months earlier, or these are going to be into the building months earlier, collecting rent or um or occupying it or the hotels, you know, and the, and, and apartment buildings or just office rent. So you're into it so much sooner. And then there's also fit out the cost of like, what does it take to do this when you don't have to put in a fake ceiling, when you've got a really beautiful existing ceiling, that's just this exposed structure, the elements related to uh, that time savings on the job site related to general conditions. You don't have your dumpsters there. You don't have your, you know, the oversight of the construction site for that long, that those percentages in large buildings really start to go and make timber very cost effective. I, I mean, here in the US, we're not just doing those 1100 buildings that are on that map just because that everyone's like, oh, I want to make it look good. It's going to pencil out. In my opinion, that's really what we're starting to see is that it's all penciling. So that's why we have this giant momentum happening. It isn't really so much about how does one product beat out another one? It's more around what makes sense for the space and what they're trying to do. Burke's role in this, this whole idea is just helping people understand what their options are and how do you build a cost-effective structure that can be great for the occupants. and. Really, Wood's got a part of that story from everyone's single family house all the way through, you know, a multi multi story, multi family building. And now going up to 18 stories, Wood can be a part of that conversation. And, and uh, we're happy to help anybody kind of work through that and getting more, uh, more affordable housing out there. I think it's a great, great thing to do. Amazing. Well, Bill, thank you so much for the presentation. Happy to be involved.